Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, continuing our neurological emergency series, uh, today we will discuss a very important topic that is very common and very serious. Uh, neuroinfections is one of the life threatening conditions and is considered a medical uh, emergency. Uh, we have multiple uh, variants of pathogens that could cause neuroinfection, as bacteria that causes mostly bacterial meningitis or abscess, viruses, and the most common is herpes virus and causes encephalitis. Fungal, parasitic, and TB, also common organisms, but in a special population as immunocompromised, they cause chronic meningitis, abscess, or granuloma. Uh, pathogens could reach the CNS or the nervous system through either hematological spread or direct invasion from sinuses, eye, or ear, or nasal, or cavity, or following neurosurgical intervention. Also, viruses could uh, go neurally as retrograde transmission as the rabies virus. Generally, clinical presentation of the patient with a neuroinfection, the patient is usually uh, critically ill. The patient should have marked systemic illness as fever and malaise, may show some neurological manifestations as disturbed conscious level, behavioral changes, seizures, meningeal irritation signs, spinal cord syndromes, muscle pains, and tenderness. Also, acute flaccid paralysis is a manifestation of neuroinfection. Diagnosis usually depends on clinical presentation. Also, it depends on lumbar puncture and CSF analysis. And sometimes we use neuroimaging in diagnosis. Management usually depends on general measures as proper hydration, antibiotics, care of bedridden, and specific antimicrobial according to the type of pathogen and management of complications, especially those of bedridden. Taking uh, into depth, we will discuss acute meningitis. It is caused by either bacterial, viral, fungal, or non-infectious. Aseptic meningitis is common with many drugs. Uh, anyone have uh, any information about drugs that cause uh, aseptic meningitis? Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, others. Common drugs, some antibiotics could cause. Uh, also, intrathecal methotrexate in patients with rheumatoid and uh, autoimmune conditions, it causes aseptic meningitis. Uh, but the most common and the most serious is a bacterial cause, usually manifested as a trial of high-grade fever, headache, and neck stiffness or meningitis. Diagnosis depends mainly on lumbar puncture and CSF analysis, which usually shows highly elevated cells, mainly neutrophils, and we will come uh, later to how to analyze CSF. Usually there is high proteins and low glucose in case of bacterial infection. Brain imaging is needed in some cases, especially those showing uh, focal neurological deficits as brain abscess. Uh, management usually depends on uh, isolation. Isolation is very important because bacterial meningitis is infectious. Uh, antibiotics, the basic one or the uh, ones that are taken once the patient is suspected, are the vancomycin and ceftriaxone, plus or minus others according to the age group and the suspected pathogen. Also, hydration is very important, plus care of bedridden. These tables show us the uh, populations and the uh, best antibiotic as an empiric initial antibiotic. As we see in adults, vancomycin and ceftriaxone are the uh, usual used one for empiric initial antibiotic. In children, ampicillin and ceftriaxone or aminoglycoside or chloramphenicol can be used. In elderly or immunocompromised, we usually add ampicillin. In patients who are suspected meningitis due to uh, neurosurgical intervention or trauma, we usually add metronidazole or use vanco and merobinum. Muscomial infection, we usually vanco and third generation cephalosporin. Uh, the other table shows the recommended doses of the uh, antibiotics. Uh, I am putting it here in here just to leave it in the group for uh, to be back or can you can use it as, as a reference uh, during breaks. Acute encephalitis usually can be caused by bacterial, viral, fungal, or non-infectious causes. Viral are the most common, and uh, herpes viruses are the most common uh, type of uh, viral encephalitis. 
The patient usually presents with a triad of fever, seizure, and disturbed conscious level. This is the second triad. We have the first triad of meningitis, that is high grade fever, headache, meningeal irritation signs. No disturbed conscious level. Sometimes patients come on disturbed conscious level, but later on, and the, the general condition of the patient uh, is, is usually poor, but in encephalitis, the triad of fever, seizure, and disturbed conscious level should be evident. Investigations usually we depend on CSF analysis and diagnosis. In cases of viral encephalitis, we usually find elevated cells, mainly lymphocytes, in meningitis, mainly neutrophils, in encephalitis, mainly lymphocytes, and normal proteins and normal glucose. Sometimes we use brain imaging. In some cases of herpes encephalitis, there is changes in the temporal uh, lobes. Usually there is some hyperintensities in, in the temporal lobes. Management depends on antiviral, acyclovir, and hydration and supportive measures. Taking CSF analysis into, into consideration, when you, you have a patient suspected encephalitis or meningitis, lumbar puncture is usually needed, and CSF analysis is important. First thing to look in the CSF analysis is the uh, white blood cell count. We usually, first thing, white blood cell count. And when you find it elevated, you go to the type of cells, either neutrophils or lymphocytes. If neutrophils, you are going in the pathway of bacteria. If lymphocytes, you are going in the viral pathway. Then after that, you look to proteins. In cases of bacteria, usually markedly elevated. In cases of viral, usually normal. After that, you look to glucose. If it is very low, it is usually to the side of bacteria. If it is normal, usually to the side of the viruses. Brain abscess. It is usually caused either by bacterial, fungal, TB, or parasitic. In this patient, the patient is usually critically ill. The patient has marked systemic illness, fever, malaise, headache, and usually show focal neurological signs. And here, diagnosis depends on neuroimaging, as we see here. When you do an MRI with contrast or CT with contrast, you find the uh, marked ring enhancement that tells you this is an abscess. Management usually depends on general supportive measures, hydration and care of bedridden, broad spectrum antibiotics, plus or minus surgical resection, especially in cases of abscess that are superficial and can be easily accessed. There are other types of neuroinfections, that is what you list, tetanus, rabies. Uh, they are not that common, but they are very serious. Botulism. It is caused by uh, Cholesterigium botulinum bacteria. It is an anaerobic organism that produces botulinum toxin. Uh, the patient gets, ingest, uh, gets infected when, ingest, uh, when ingesting a contaminated food as salted fish, canned food, or honey. Usually, the uh, bacteria goes through the neuromuscular junction and the toxin goes to the neuromuscular junction. It blocks acetylcholine biscuit from releasing acetylcholine, thus causing acute flaccid paralysis. Usually, the, uh, the manifestations appear within 12 to 36 hours after ingestion of the uh, contaminated food. The patient presents with descending flaccid paralysis with prominent bulbar manifestations, very low vision, diplopia, dysarthria, facial weakness, usually without fever, or encephalopathy, the patient is fully awake, limbs become weaker over a few days, and reflexes are decreased or absent. Usual respiratory muscle affection leads to respiratory failure and death. Management depends on ICU admission and secure, uh, securing airway, breathing, and circulation. As early as possible, we should give the patient botulinum in, uh, botulism, immunoglobulin intravenous, or the heptavalent antitoxin. The early the patient takes the antitoxin, the better the outcome. A related infection is the tetanus infection. It is caused by Cholesterium tetani, which is a gram-positive anaerobic spore-forming bacilli. They produce toxin called tetanospasmine. 
The spores go into uh, contaminated wounds and germinate and produce their toxin. The toxin goes through the neuromuscular junction in retrograde fashion, then goes to the inhibitory internal neurons at the level of the spinal cord, causing their inhibition. Inhibition of the inhibitory internal neurons causes nervous system excitation. Okay? And the patient presents with the uh, titanic posture and the severe muscle spasms. Clinical presentation, the presentation, the patient usually manifests within 7 to 10 days. Initially, the patient develops ill-defined malaise, followed by increased motor activity, and there is muscle look to jaw, laryngeal spasm, obsoconus position, and respiratory muscle spasm, cyanosis, apnea, and death. The patient looks like this. This is the Christmas, the patient has locked the jaw and the uh, characteristic laugh, and this is the obsotonous puncture of back muscle uh, spasticity or uh, contraction. The patient uh, in, in this uh, state usually uh, has reserved conscious level. Management depends on ICU admission and securing airway, breathing, and circulation. Wound management is very important. The wound should be deprived and given antibiotics. Antitoxin, human tetanus, immunoglobulin should be injected intramuscularly as soon as possible after infection. Then we have to give muscle relaxants and benzodiazepine for muscle relaxation. Tetanus vaccination is very important for protection. It should be taken every 10 years. Last neuro infection is the rabies infection caused by rabies virus, which is an RNA virus. The patient gets infected when uh, getting a bite from an animal by inoculation of the virus into wounds. Uh, the animal is the, the most characteristic is dogs, but it goes with other animals as cats and bats. Sometimes patient, uh, people who go to caves and things get bitten by the, uh, the bats, get also rabies. The virus uh, goes uh, retrograde in a retrograde fashion through the CNS, peripheral nerve, then the spinal cord, till it reaches the central nervous system. The incubation period varies between days and weeks, from three weeks to three months. The uh, manifestations usually go into categories. First stage, the patient experiences a flow-like illness, lasting for days associated with discomfort at the site of injury. The second stage is the cerebral involvement stage with hallucinations, aggression, delirium, abnormal behavior, seizures, and hyperventilation. The third stage is a fetal stage, uh, which is the hydrophobic stage uh, when the patient gets muscle spasms in the larynx and uh, pharynx provoked by drinking or hearing the sound of water. The spasms uh, then spread to involve the whole musculature, giving the obstetrical position that we saw in the last slide. Management depends on ICU admission and securing airway breathing and circulation. Extensive immediate wound cleaning with water and detergents. Also receiving the uh, rabies post-exposure prophylaxis in the form of human rabies immunoglobulin given into the wound and injected also intramuscularly. And the rabies vaccine is very important for doses given over two weeks, then periodic booster. Any questions? Okay, let us take some uh, cases. This is case one. A 79 years old woman, diabetes, hypertension, leg ulcers, develop headache and fever. On examination, she has neck stiffness and mild confusion. CT is unremarkable. Lumbar puncture shows uh, WBC's number of 500, normally up to 5, with predominant neutrophilic uh, involvement, protein level is of 60 milligrams, it's elevated, normal up to 4.5, and glucose level is 80. And the serum glucose is 198. That means that CSF glucose is low. We have predominant neutrophils, elevated proteins, and low glucose. CSF culture is uh, sent. Uh, what's the most probable diagnosis? Who is with A? A viral? B bacteria? 
okay, tubercles meningitis or fungal encephalitis, this bacterial meningitis. In such a case, the first line treatment regimen is A. Okay. Yes, it is A, isolation and start antibiotics. In which antibiotics? Vancomycin, septaraxone, and ampicillin. Yes, because the patient is 79 years old. Okay, case 3, 25 years old man uh, was involved in a motorbike accident 8 months ago and suffered head trauma requiring craniofacial surgeries. He also has a history of chronic sinusitis, presents with fever, change in mental status, his brain MRI is shown. As we see here, this is the MRI brain. We have two brain enhancing regions, which are encephalitis, abscess, meningitis, fungal abscess. Yes. Thank you.